Afzal or Afzal says, could you explain to me about Najd? And when the Sahaba asked the Prophet ﷺ about our Najd, he said that the horns will appear from there. Please explain. That means Salafism and Wahhabism. Is that right? And refute Iraq being Najd. First of all, this is an issue if you read the books of all the scholars from the time of the companions until recently, 200 or 300 years ago, you'll find no reference, none whatsoever, to the Najd that people talk about today. Why is that? See, Najd in Arabic means a high place. So Hijaz, Mecca and Medina, has Najd. Iraq has Najd. All these places has Najd to them, which is an area that is a hill or something that has a higher elevation than them. So this is called Najd. Now, we would like to understand, is Najd referring to Saudi Arabia, Riyadh, al qasim and the area in the middle uh, uh, region? so that we can understand? Or is it somewhere else? Before we go into explaining it, why are you asking? He says, because people say that all deviant thoughts and all evil acts come from Najd, where Saudi Arabia is today. And on top of the list is Salafism or Salafiyyah and Wahhabism. So I said, okay, let us look at the hadith. When you look at the hadith of the Prophet والسلام, he said, may Allah bless our Yemen and our Sham. And the companion said, what about our Najd, O Prophet of Allah? He repeated, bless our Yemen and Sham. And in the third time, he said, there comes the fitan, the trials and calamities come from there. And there is the horn of the devil. In a narration, the horn of the sun, which means it is in the east. So the scholars such as al Nawawi, Ibn Taymi, al Khattabi, all the whole nine yards of these scholars stated that this is in reference to the area between Bahrain and Iraq. And they said that when the Prophet ﷺ condemns or speaks bad about an area, this doesn't mean that the people of the area are bad. And it doesn't also mean that the area would be condemned for the rest of time. Yani for example, the hadith in Sahih Imam Muslim, the Prophet said, ﷺ, I can see fitna throughout your homes like the rainfall and it will penetrate your homes who is he talking and addressing he's addressing the people of medina he's telling his companions so is anyone in his sound mind would say oh everything in medina is bad and evil and deviant and corrupt and the people of medina are bad no he's referring to a specific period of time and not condemning the area as a whole if you look at Mecca, when the Prophet migrated from it, والسلام, was it a place of Islam and Iman? Definitely not. So should we condemn it and condemn the people in it? Definitely not. It's not the land that blesses or curses the individual that lives in it. It's the person's own doing. Now, having said that, let us see when the Prophet said والسلام, that from there, all the trials and calamities, all the fitan will come from. Let us see. Compare apple to apple. What calamities and fitan came from Najd, which we refer to nowadays as uh, 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 the, east, the eastern or the uh, central region of Saudi Arabia. What fitan came from there to the Muslim world compared to what came from Iraq, from Iran, and 
the roundabouts. From there, we had the Khawarij in Harura. We had Al Jahmiyyah, who totally ignored Allah's beautiful names and attributes and worshipped vacuum. We had the Mu'tazila, who did what they did to Al Hassan al Basri in Basra, in Iraq. We had all the tribulations and all the wars and all the bad and deviant ideologies coming from in Iraq. Until two or three hundred years ago, no one ever referred to Najd as being the central region of Saudi Arabia. Only when Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab came, who they claim is the founder of Wahhabism, and there's no such thing as Wahhabism. Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab did not bring any new fiqh, did not bring any new aqidah, simply he spread the aqidah of the Salaf. And the Salaf are the Prophet ﷺ, the companions, the tabi'een, and the tabi'i tabi'een. That's it. Look and study his books and give me one point and say that this goes against Quran or Sunnah. He speaks only Quran and Sunnah. So who tarnished the reputation of Najd and is trying to widely spread the idea that the hadith refers to it, and this is a blatant lie, it's the Shia and the super Sufis. All those who are deviant, all those who innovate in Islam and would like to divert the Muslims from the Quran and Sunnah, they are the only one who use this label. If you have any objectivity, if you have any logic, go back to the Quran and Sunnah and compare apple to apple and tell me if what the teachings of Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, what the aqeedah of the Salaf is telling people is in line with the Quran or Sunnah or not.